and uh, we'll just do the best we can today uh, under the circumstances. So hopefully everybody can see uh, my camera, which is facing the uh, the bowl of the arena, and uh, you should be able to see me. And then I'm going to invite Frank Remish, who's the current general manager of the arena, and future general, to uh, to be able to provide sort of the the details of the building and try to answer any questions we can today. Um, so I'll rely on Kim to uh, convey any questions from the audience because it's a little hard for me to uh, to see. Um, but with that, I think what we'll do is we'll just get started. And we're just going to start in the bowl and then uh, make our way around the arena. And then if there's specific questions or specific things people want to see, we'll try to do the best we can to address that. And if we can't do it today, uh, we'll we'll try to follow up with everybody on this call with the information. Uh, so with that, Frank, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi everyone, I'm Frank. I'm the just building because you're too tall. Okay, I got you. There you go. Hey everybody, I'm Frank. Uh, I'm the uh, current building manager, or the future building manager. I don't know why I said that, but I'll be your Julie McCoy today. I'll be your tour manager, uh, tour guide. So just go ahead and fire away with any questions. Uh, again, it's a little difficult for me too because I'm used to walking around with. Uh, crowds of people and I can see your faces and you guys point and talk and do all those things. But um, I'll do my best uh, and we'll just go ahead and start points that I think is relevant. So and if you need, just go ahead and ask. So we'll go ahead and move into the bowl uh, and uh, I'll let Frank narrate once we get there. It's probably a little choppy as we move to, uh, to the center, but we'll stop once we get there and uh, Frank can talk about the, the structure. So, uh, so what you're seeing right now is the Arena Bowl itself. There's approximately 11,000 permanent seats. The, uh, the building was built in 1962. Basically, have uh, has had one renovation, um, and that was in the. And don't quote me on this. I think it was in the early to mid 80s. Um, there used to be an ex exhibition hall on the other side of the stage, which is now currently the parking garage, uh, which is their two independent buildings uh, just attached by a uh, expansion joint. But inside the arena bowl itself, uh, you have from wall to wall, from this north end wall where we're standing to the stage wall, the proscenium wall, it's 228 feet from uh, hard wall to hard wall, uh, east and west, it's 100 feet. We do have an ice floor. Uh, um, obviously, for making ice for Disney on ice and for hockey, uh, it's the funny thing is it's fairly new, but it was probably put in in '98. But everything's relative for me uh, again because the building was built in '62. The plant doesn't have that many hours on it; it's in great shape. Uh, the structure itself, I was telling Colin earlier. So when we um when when this when this structure was made. We have a proscenium stage in common sense to tell you that's where all the acts played off that stage and all the rigging was done underneath that 38 foot wall. Well, over time things evolved, shows got bigger and, and more, uh, more production came. So now they build out, probably we have a dead space, um, uh, eight and a half feet off that wall, we'll build, start to build uh, freestanding stages. And we actually hang from the girders of this building, which is the, the girders of the roof of the building. Uh, the, the building girders itself is, is an incredible structure because it was built by a bridge company. And uh, this building can pretty much go toe to toe with any other building when it comes to weights for shows. Um, we've had a, we have had a building analysis, um, and I think our largest show is 175,000 pounds uh, with Travis Scott. So we. Um, we can handle any show that's out there. Um, the lighting in a building, you know, it's 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 all been redone. It's all LED lighting. Um, the scoreboard's fairly new, but it's not a state-of-the-art scoreboard. It has video, but it's not HD. Um, we have two we have two suites in the building, and then we have a sky and a suite seat about fourteen people. They're new, and we have a skybox can sit probably about. 
people. We've had over 100 people up in the sky box, uh, which is a pretty nice area. It's just a little bit further away. Um, the seats were redone. They're still in decent shape, but the lower bowl seats were done in the late 90s. The upper bowl was just done about two years ago. Um, and they're in great shape, obviously. Uh, structurally, the building's in great shape. I mean, those of you can remember what it, it what it was, it was a fallout shelter. So the, the bones of the building itself are in good shape. I don't know of any problems. We made it through the earthquake without any, any um, the, uh, the roof system is in okay shape. Uh, but uh, it probably would need some work done to it. Uh, is there any questions, I guess, for this part of it? I'm used to saying, oh, while we're in the Arena Bowl itself. If you have questions, if you could put them in the chat, that would probably be the most efficient way, and then we'll go ahead and read those out to everybody. For, for students, we're probably running at, um, where are we at, 2,500 amps, something like that? 25 to 3,000 amps for shows, which we're in pretty good shape for all shows. No one's actually asked for any more. Um, the electric in the building, most of the transformers have been um, replaced or uh, uh, or under under uh, uh, PM, so they're all in good shape. Um, plumbing in the building, you know, it's spotty like any older building. A lot of it was copper or cast iron. We replace it, you know, as needed. It's not in horrible shape. It's functioning now. Um, I guess one of the one of the wish list things I would say in the '60s it was very peculiar. Um, there's just not enough bathrooms in the building. There's there's bathrooms, but the space inside the bathrooms are are, are not utilized correctly. Um, back then, back then in the women's bathrooms, they had a makeup area. So literally, you would have now you have six stalls in a bathroom that should have probably. 12 stalls, at least 11. Um, so that's that's one of the difficulties of the build, building. The hallways on the main concourse, we have four concourses. The hallway on the main concourse, which is the second floor, is fairly narrow. Um, there's there's points in the hallway that are probably only seven and a half, eight feet wide. So I don't see any questions on the, the bowl. So I think what we'll do is we'll move to the concourses just so you get a sense of the conditions there. Um, so what I'll do is I'll mute, and then we'll go ahead and travel over to the main uh, the, the main level concourse. I, I would say we'll go to the lobby first, and we'll let you look at the lobby, and then we'll head up to the second floor concourse. So we're going to travel. Um, we'll keep it on camera, and if you have any questions in the meantime, please put them in the chat. Thank you. We'll try to answer whatever we can today through the chat, um, but I will be posting all the questions um, with the answers um, to the RFP site, um, um, hopefully within by, by middle of next week. Okay, guys, now we're in the uh, main lobby, which is on Hopkins and Baltimore Street. And this is, you're looking at the box office. And we had a small box office um, and we had ticket kiosks. And we replaced those probably about four or five years ago and put, it's pretty much a state of the art box office now. Um, it's in really good shape. Uh, 
the lobby itself, I think this is one of the enhancements they did in the 80s. Uh, it's all glass. Uh, there's some problems here that the, uh, when they did this lobby, they didn't put enough HVAC in the lobby. Um, they just kind of retrofitted what was already here. So uh, that would have to be addressed. 85% uh, of the people attending shows come through this point here, and we have another entrance up on the other side uh, that light rail utilizes. Uh, there is a light rail stop right outside this building on Howard Street. Um, and I don't know if it's still the case, but it used to be what they what they told me in the city was that it was the number one bus bus stop in all of Maryland was located on Baltimore Street. Again, let's just say it's it's a pretty pretty popular bus stop. So you have a lot of foot traffic around this facility also. Are there any questions about the uh, the lobby itself? All right, we're going to head up to the uh, to the second level, the main concourse. Right. Hi, Amy. May I speak to um, Anne Marie? Um, well, maybe Sir, someone else. Sir, calling Anne Marie. Needs to mute their uh, phone, please. Okay. Yes. One one eight eight zero. Brennan, mute, mute your phone. All right. Okay, so this is the second floor concourse. And this building is a U-shaped building because the garage cuts us off. If you look down here, you can see how narrow the, uh, the between the points of sale, the concession stands, which again is kind of miserable because if someone looks down, it's really hard to visualize where the concession stands are. They also put the steps on the inside of the building, which again narrows if they would have bumped them. I don't even know if you need this much steps in the building. There's an argument for that too, uh, the width of the steps, but it really hurts uh, this concourse width because you, you would have four or 5,000 people in this hallway and you, all you see is choke points. Um, we do our best we can. It seems like in the 60s, they didn't really think about concessions. Um, I know this kind of looks like a carnival effect, but that's, it, is what, it is what it is, that's all we can do. We have a merch stand to your left, um, and that's the number one merch stand in the building. And then you have all the concessions. You have two concession stands here. The other side is symmetrical with this side. In fact, all the floors pretty much look, look alike. Um, and we've done the best we could at creating bars and ancillary concession stands um, out of storage areas. But the one thing that Rena does have, it's a lot of storage areas. So there's a lot of space that can be utilized. Um, behind, behind these walls here are escalators. It was too expensive to tear them out, so I just built them in. It's a whole lot easier to build them in because we have plenty of space. I didn't need the space. Um, again, maybe something you have to deal with. The, the escalators became antiquated and it wasn't cost effective. To repair them so um and they're really not needed uh so again that's just another fact that you need to uh stow away any questions in the concourse area not talking to crowd So we're just gonna we're just gonna walk to the uh, to the the west side of the building, uh, just so you can get a sense of it. Uh, but again, if there's any questions, please answer them in the chat. Um, if there's anything specific that people need or want to see.
So there was a question about the, was it concourse or concourse? The floors? concourse floor. Oh, the floors are in great shape. We have an acrylic, uh, if you look, it's an acrylic coating we put on. Uh, we started the process five, six years ago, maybe. Yeah, it's in really, really good shape. Uh, in fact, all the levels pretty much look like this. The first level is is a little bit more dull. It's got some gouges in it, but you got to understand we have uh, we have monster trucks, um, we have zambonis that ride over it and stuff. It takes a lot more abuse on the first level, motorcycles, things like that. Um, this level is just pedestrian traffic, uh, but it's. I mean, Colin can attest to it. it it's you got to understand something. The building's dirty now. We don't have any staff, so just just from time, it's not as clean as it normally is. Um, but I would say it still looks like it's in pretty good shape. Um, so as you can see too, you're looking straight down into, uh, there's black doors all the way down at the end of the building are the arena parking garage that's attached to this building. Um, again, it's a symmetrical building. Uh, um, is there any other uh, questions with this two concession stands on this side? There's what you see to the left a little bit is another merch stand. Um, and then again, points of sale, uh, portables. Want to do a look inside the arena, just get that perspective. So, so we're just going to move over to the arena to see you get a sense of entering the, uh, the bowl from the concourse. And then if there's no more questions, uh, we'll, we'll probably wrap unless there's something specific people need to see. So this is the perspective from the second level, um, second floor concourse, looking down to the stage, which is basically your sight line right now for where the uh, floating concert stage normally is. Probably not a whole lot too, uh, more to discuss than I already did. Oh, ADA sections. You just kind of saw that. <laughs> we only have four ADA sections in this facility. You see these folding chairs stacked up to the camera left um, and this whole building we basically have i don't know 28 yeah 28 uh wheelchair locations um uh, we can we can get uh some some other room in depending on the seating configuration down on the floor but pretty much that's it in this building obviously we built in the 60s before before the uh uh, policies were instituted with the ADA rules. So we're on the, the second concourse, and then there's, there's one more seating uh, level above this, which is basically the basically the same. It's just set back. Uh, yeah. Again, another little thing too. The, the seating itself is quirky in the corners. It's a it's a basically a rectangle rectangle building. Uh, rectangular building, I should say, uh, and there's literally seats in the corners looking at each other. It's very peculiar. Obviously, it should have been rounded, um, but I guess you lose some seats doing that, so that's why they didn't do it. Um, another issue that obviously probably have to be addressed. The height of the ceiling, the, the rigging height um, is 88 feet uh, to the rigging steel. We have, if you can kind of see, I, I painted them all black, so it's hard to see, but there's an acoustical tile ceiling in a V shape, we call them clouds. And again, this building was built in the 60s. You guys probably know this a lot better than me. You're all, I'm sure there's a lot of architects and engineers on the uh, on the line, but they were built for um, breaking up sound waves. One side's hard, one side's soft, but it's really just a drop ceiling on both sides. Underneath that are, is the bridge, uh, the girders to the bridge uh, that I was talking about earlier. There's a question about elevators in terms of passenger and service. There's, there's two elevators in the building. And they're just for passengers. They were just totally rebuilt, um, but they're small. I, I can't remember the capacity. Um, it's probably eight to 10 people at the most. There is no freight elevator. They took the freight elevator out when they built the parking garage, which is very frustrating because my 
elevators now are service elevators, which again, if anyone's in the business, you understand how many kegs of beer we must ship around um, and equipment. So the elevators take a heck of abuse over the years. Um, so we definitely would have to have a freight elevator in the building somewhere. Are there other questions? Um, otherwise, we're likely to go ahead and conclude uh, the tour. We are working to see if we can find uh, as built or at least older uh, drawings that we can make available, uh, but they are very old um, drawings in print, uh, what we do have, um, but we'll try to make those available. There's also some photographs that we've put into a PowerPoint, uh, which Kim will send a link around to um, for you. Um, but we're not seeing any other uh, questions or details in the chat. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll give you a few minutes to think of anything uh, and then we'll conclude. I sent the PowerPoint around um, to everyone. Um, also, I um, have asked Susan to post it on the website with the RFP. Great. Well, we thank you. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't be in person, uh, which I know would probably be beneficial to, to everybody. Uh, but like I said, we're trying to uh, to adapt like everyone. Um, so if you do have questions um, per the process, those need to be sent to uh, Kim Clark. And then uh, any questions that are asked or any information that is um, sent to uh, any of you will be sent to everybody. Um, so we'll, we'll make sure that everyone has the same information available. With that, I want to thank uh, Frank for taking time to, to show us the arena and answer any questions. And uh, we look forward to uh, seeing responses. Colin, one thing, did you show the loading docks? We didn't. Uh, we, we can do that. We'd have to, we can walk It'll there. It'll take about five minutes for us to walk down. It'll take a few minutes to walk. Okay, but why don't you scoot on down? Okay, okay. I think okay. that's an important thing to see. Sure. I think you guys should run. I have a cart. It's very hard to run. <laughs> and the wheel is kind of stuck. I'm going to turn the camera off for a second while we uh, while we walk. So, bear okay. With. And while you walk, um, Frank, can you describe the amenities available for performers, lockers for ice shows, etc.? Okay, walking and talking. I don't know if I have the ability to do that. Um, so, the the dressing room areas when they built this place again. Not trying to make excuses. It's just a fact of life. When they built this place, it was built in the 60s. Oh, yeah. It was built in the 60s, so the dressing rooms were very small, uh, chopped up. They were almost like um, almost like what you would think of is, is backstage for like makeup and things like that. So over time, we've increased the sizes, and we do have adequate rooms uh, for, for the um, performers. And pretty much all of them have been remodeled um, and we have a an exclusive vip dressing room uh it's basically a green room that's that's stated art it's beautiful wet bar the whole nine yards so we're in pretty good shape there um when it comes to the size of locker rooms the condition of locker rooms um some of them probably could use a modernization but they're not in bad shape for what they are again uh we have a diversity of events in this building from monster trucks to ufc to Disney on ice, to religious events. So there's a lot, you know, monster trucks, uh, a lot of abuse in those locker rooms. The loading dock itself um, is not used for shows anymore. Um, this stage is pretty much antiquated for shows. They'll use it for storage and they'll use it for their sound equipment, things like that. Um, we'll come up here up on stage you want to do that you want to go around the back i would say go this is the path show them where the roll door is where okay the yeah so we can actually in, in the path past we've unloaded and loaded for shows to two different points you're looking at 
stage right, the elephant roll-up door, where prob primarily most of the shows unload and load. Um, and this is where the dump trucks, everything comes in, come in to dump the, uh, the dirt for the uh, monster trucks. You're looking at the entrance to the arena, pretty much the uh, employee entrance. This is, we're on the first floor itself now. Now this is all back at house. We're heading toward the, um, we're heading toward the garage itself now. Again, not to make excuses, but we're pretty much shut down. We have been shut down for a long time. So you're coming into the bowels of the building. Um, this is, this is the loading dock to your right. But again, the, it's not really utilized for shows. Very, 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 very seldom. Um, you're standing underneath the parking garage right now that's attached to the building. This was exhibition halls in the old days, conventions. The uh, we'll store in the loading docks, depending on the events, but we'll store buses. Um, we do have enough power in here for the buses. We have, uh, this is where the satellite trucks to go sometimes uh, for TV, obviously, um, and for Disney on Ice uh, and other shows, we'll store uh, some of the um, props and things, monster trucks and things like that. But this was, again, for the circus, this is where all the animals were at, were stored. Kim, there's a question in the chat, I think, but I can't access it. Is Could you read that? Yeah, it's about the amenities. Can you describe the amenities available for performers, lockers for ice shows? And Frank already talked through that. Okay, great. Yeah, I think if you go on our website, it shows some pictures. Is it the website or the promoter guide? Yeah, the promoter guide has a lot of that stuff in it. We can get to that. Okay. It's pictures of the dressing rooms and maybe even sweets and things like that. Kim, is there anything else you'd like us to, to cover? Um, I think you got everything that I would have shown. Oh, no, can you go back up to the third floor? No, I'm just kidding. Um, How about the catwalk? Is, is Colin afraid of heights? No, I'm I don't kidding. know. Yes. Um, I think we're good. Okay, I'll just sort of show, uh, you know, this is this is the door that goes out to Hopkins uh, Plaza, Hopkins Place. And then uh, again, this is the main entrance to the arena. And you can see the uh, historic stage, which is the original stage. Yeah, it's the original stage. Yeah, so this is the original stage that literally Beatles, Elvis, uh, everybody and his brother from the 60s, because we were one of the main touring stops in the early 60s, played here on this stage. Stage is probably 60 feet deep or so. I think it's 80 some feet wide. But it was theater, uh, it was a total theater setup. You have all the stage. Um, uh, uh, legs that come down for the curtains and things like that. Pretty much just use this for college graduations now. And then this is your view as, uh, as Mick Jagger. I'll give you, a, if anyone of you ever heard my tours before, I'll give you a factoid. Stage left, which is the Collins left, as you're looking off the stage, in 1977, Elvis threw up. So that's another claim to fame they have. <laughs> that's an old joke, but I figure you're a new crowd, so I can uh, I can use it. All right. Well, with that, um, we'll go ahead and conclude the tour. Uh, we'll give everyone a, a minute or two to. Uh, 
put any other questions. Otherwise, you can email them to Kim Clark. Um, you should have got an invite from her for this, so you should have her email. Uh, and we look forward to, to hearing from you. All right, thank you, everybody.